Good morning, family. Watchwoman 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm here with, um, I haven't forgotten Halloween. I'm going to do something on that too, but I got up early this morning and I was looking at some of the comments about um, some of the people that I had um, talked about, like Sandy Armstrong, Jerry T uh, Tony, and all of the ones who are into works-based salvation. I was looking at some of the comments and people still feel that once saved, always saved or eternal security is false. So I was looking at the comments and I'm like, well, I think I got to hit this again because some of the comments were harsh and I left them up there. I didn't, I didn't delete some of them. It's, um, it's mostly on, uh, about Sandy Armstrong and about that. And um, people are still railing against me about Marcus Rogers and Kanye West. And to be honest with you, it's getting kind of old. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you about Kanye West. If he is, he's got invited to Joel Osteen's church, which don't surprise me one bit. Two birds flock, Two birds of a feather will flock together. Joel Osteen is the epitome of the Laodicean church. What can I say? What I am saying, if this man is truly saved, and I hope he is, then it will show. To accept an invitation to his church, Joel Osteen's church, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have accepted it. But... Like I said, from what I'm seeing now, it's all about appearances. And someone mocked me about saying, oh, well, you're just against people who have money. No, I'm not against people who have money. I'm against people who love money. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. So there you go. If they have the money... And they're doing something good for it with it then go by all means go for it from what i'm understanding and from what i'm seeing his wife is still seeing mediums on the side and say that they're spiritual guides i don't know and quite frankly to be honest with you i don't really care because like i said if he's truly saved it will show but i'm just telling you don't get caught up with every wind of doctrine and being tossed to and fro with every celebrity that claims they know Christ. Because you have to use discernment, especially in these last days. There are many false Christs out there. And there are many false people out there that claim they have had a knowledge, they, they know Jesus Christ. And the bottom line is, they probably don't. They just had an experience. Now, if him and his wife are going, are still going seeing mediums and spiritual guides, I doubt seriously if they're saved, period. You can quote me. You can call me all kinds of names. I don't really care. I'm just telling you the facts. You want to follow these people? Be my guest. I'm done with that one. But what I did want to talk about is eternal security because people are still... The, the works people are coming up against us and it's getting tiring already. It, it really is. They're saying that we're wrong. They're railing against every grace teacher and preacher out there. And it gets to the point where, okay, you don't have nothing else for them. Now I'm going to hit this again. Is eternal security, once saved, always saved, a license to sin? No. Eternal security is not a license to sin. Rather, it's a security of knowing that God's love is guaranteed for those who trust in Christ. I'm looking at my notes here. Knowing and understanding God's tremendous gift of salvation accomplishes the opposite of giving a license to sin. How could anyone knowing the price Jesus paid for us go on in a life of 
what you used to do. How can anyone who understands God's unconditional and guaranteed love for those of us who believe take that love and throw it back in God's face? Well, when you teach that you're not, that you don't have eternal security, when you teach that you have to maintain it with works, when you teach someone that you will lose your salvation, that's exactly what they're doing. Is they're taking it and they're throwing the love of God back in his face and they're trampling it underfoot. That's what works does. The Bible is very clear that salvation is through grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. John 3.16, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, and John 14, 6. And the gospel in itself, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The moment a person is truly saved, the moment they truly, and I don't mean just with the heart, I mean with the heart. I don't mean just with the head, I mean with the heart as well. The moment that that person truly believes in Jesus Christ, he or she is saved, secure, safe in that salvation. It is unbiblical to say the salvation is received by faith, but then has to be maintained by works. There is nothing in the Bible about that. Matter of fact, Paul rebukes the Galatian church about that. Yes, we believe in once saved, always saved, because you are. Once you are saved, you are truly always saved. There is no going back. The reason why, and like I said, the reason that I'm hitting this again is because the comments that I'm seeing, even coming in on um, like the past uh, people I've exposed who don't believe in this, they're coming back saying that I'm lying, that I'm wrong. Matter of fact, I had to block one woman because she put it on one of the posts. Don't listen to her. You have to be water baptized. She's, t she's sending you to hell. I'm not, you know, I don't have time for that. I, I really don't. The Apostle Paul addresses the issue in Galatians 3.3, which I just mentioned. When he asked, are you so foolish that you're going to turn back to works? Basically, is what he's asking. If we are saved by faith, our salvation is also maintained and secured by faith. We cannot earn our salvation. Neither can we earn the maintenance of our salvation. It is God who maintains our salvation, Jude 24. It is God's hand that holds us firmly in his grasp. That's in John 10. It is God's love that nothing can separate us from him. Any denial of, eternity, of eternal security is in, is in essence a belief that we can maintain our salvation on our own by our own works, by our own efforts. That's completely unethical and that's completely unbiblical. We are saved because of Christ's merits only, not our own. To claim that we must obey God's word and live a godly life to maintain our salvation is saying that Jesus' death was not enough. And that's exactly what these people are saying. They're saying that Jesus' death on the cross was not enough. And that is wrong. And that is damnable. It's heresy. Every last one of them. Does that mean that we can live any way we want? Absolutely not. The Bible makes it clear that a true Christian will not live any way we want. 
Tim Henderson has made it clear. Barry's made it clear. All of us has made it clear. We strive for holiness. Do we always achieve it? No. We are perfect in position, but we are not perfect in performance. Tim says that all the time. And it's true. We are perfect in position, but we are not perfect in performance all the time. We miss it. We fall. We sin. It's inevitable until we are caught up in the air. We are, de we are dead to sin. And for them to sit there day after day and promote such heresy that we have to maintain our salvation, that we have to work for our salvation, that we have to do this and that for our salvation, like I said, is a damnable heresy. Are they saved? I have no idea. But for them to go out and teach other people this heresy, in my opinion, it's, got, it's blasphemy. Because you cannot teach somebody grace. And like I said in the past, when I expose these other people, and I have more to expose, but I had to hit this because this was really bothering me how they're coming back saying that we're making a religion out of uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 on rightly dividing the word of God. Sandy Armstrong say it, said it. Uh, Jerry Tony said it. They're saying that we're actually making a religion out of 2 Timothy 2.15 by rightly dividing the word of God. They couldn't be more wrong. Because that is what we're told to do. Rightly divide the word of God. They want to go and take us back to the Old Testament, which is the law, especially Sandy Armstrong. And I'm, I picked up something about him. I, it kind of feels like, and I don't know for sure, it kind of feels like that he is in the Hebrew Roots movement because they are known for the law and the Jewish traditions. They are known for the law. And if that's the case, he is not, he was off course before. It wouldn't surprise me, not one bit. Um, we are eternally secure in our salvation. People will rail against us and they do it every day. We are eternally secure. The Bible is clear about that. What they're using, if you notice, what they're using in the Bible to point out that we're wrong. They're going back to Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's what they're using. You notice that they don't they take what Paul says and they twist it. But they want to mostly be in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Which is a different dispensation. It's a different teaching. The Bible is very, very clear. It is through grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. There is nothing we can do to maintain our salvation. There is nothing we can do works wise to get saved. We are saved for works. We are not saved by works. And we are not kept saved by works. It seemed like I had to hit this again because a few people are, I'm looking at some of the comments and they they're saying that this is unbiblical when in actuality, 
what the teachers of uh, Sandy Armstrong, Sister Jazz, yeah, I mentioned her, Sister Jazz, uh, Jerry Tony, Revelation Mark Hardy, and several others are teaching is that we have to maintain our salvation. We have to walk right or we will fall behind. We have to walk right or we will be left behind. That's in heresy. And that is throwing back the grace gift that God has given us. That's throwing it back in his face, saying that that's not enough. Like I've said in the past, we have got to use discernment and be careful of these people out here. There are so many YouTube channels, it's not even funny. And they got thousands and thousands and thousands of viewers watching them every day. And they're teaching something that is not true. And people are falling for it hook, line, and sinker. This uh, Sister Jazz person, she's teaching that she is so animately against once saved, always saved. And if I'm not mistaken, she went up against him. And I listen, I can only listen to these people for a little while and it aggravates me. It just aggravates me because they are so far off. I'm going to say this. And I know I'm going to get people asking about this or saying something about this. If a person teaches that you can lose your salvation, if they're teaching a person that they can lose their salvation, that person is not really saved. I'm just saying. Because like I said, you've taken the gift that God has given you and you threw it back in his face saying, no, I have to do this and I have to do this to keep my walk with you. Here again, they've taken the simplicity of Christ and they've trampled it underfoot. Salvation is free. The gift of grace is free, but it's not cheap. I'm going to say this again. You cannot be married to Jesus and date Moses. People are putting grace with works and they're teaching this. Oh, it's easy to find a church. It's easy to find a YouTube channel that are full of works based uh, teachings out there. But it's rare to find a channel that teaches grace through faith in Christ alone only. We are far and few in between. And these people want to keep going on and on and on, putting fear in people. Telling them that they have to do something to maintain their salvation is what they're like I said, what they're doing, they're throwing grace, they're throwing the gift of grace back in God's face, saying, I'll do this on my own. That's dangerous. Not to mention stupid. These people irritate me. They really do. They irritate me. I pray for you people every day. And uh, like I said, you're family to me. You're more than just a channel, you're family. Um, I pray God's blessings over you. And I thank the new subscribers that have come on the channel. I will continue um, the thing about Halloween. I got some more research to do about that. But I will continue that. And I'm gonna give you a story about what happened to me <laughs> in my house when I was looking at a, um, it was on the channel Destination America and the, and the show was called a, a Haunting. I'm gonna tell you what happened. I'll tell you that later. Anyway, have a nice day.